Hello and welcome, dear students. And uh, today I'm taking this class not as a live class. Uh, this is going to be a recorded session for people to see. Uh, all my dear, lovely students are going for their uh, exam on Monday. And today, uh, on Sunday, I usually take a live class. But today, in respect of my ex uh, exam going students, I have decided uh, that I'll not take a live class. Instead, I'll be posting this recorded session for all my other students who had given a uh, yes in the poll, which uh, a survey that was conducted by me a couple uh, a week before. And I asked all my students whether they wanted a live class uh, in continuation on endocrinology or um, I should not take one. So there were uh, around 60% of you who said yes for the live class. But I understand that there'll be a couple of those students who are going for the exams. They'll be unhappy with this decision and which is why I'm now taking a uh, a recorded session. So today is going to be a little long session, guys. Uh, maybe a, couple, a little, uh, uh, a couple of minutes over the one hour uh, schedule. Why? Because today I'm going to discuss a lot of topics on the adrenal gland per se. So today's session actually is going to be on hirsutism and on uh, the adrenal gland hormones. So I think well, let's first, you know, try to uh, understand hirsutism and then we we'll, uh, get on to understanding the other hormones as well. So I'll just share my screen and you will get to understand what I mean to say. So this is hirsutism and we'll start with hirsutism and I'll get to the adrenal hormones and I'll, understand, then I'll make you understand, uh, you know, uh, why I chose uh, this session first. And uh, uh, why I'm taking hirsutism is because in the light of what I discussed last time. So we were discussing PCOS, right? And PCOS had a very important, you know, part of hirsutism in it. And I think I discussed a lot of hirsutism in it, especially the, you know, biochemical and the clinical features of, uh, you know, hirsutism per se. That means what all features would you say, would you call hirsute? And which all, uh, you know, features can be present otherwise also, like, you know, present of presence of fine hair all over the all over the body. So they, that's not hirsutism. Okay, those coarse, dark, terminal hair, they are actually, and that also present at particular portions of the body. Suppose they're present on here, on the arms, that's not called hirsutism, but here on upper arm, Inner thigh, that's called it. So legs, you will, you will find a lot of people having the, you know, coarse black hair on the legs, on the feet. But that's not, you know, a, a part of uh, hirsutism inside the inner upper thigh. That is, you know, uh, in the Ferriman Galloway scoring. So we discussed Ferriman Galloway scoring as well. We were talking about PCOS. So it's just justified for continue with hirsutism in that light. And you'll get help from the PCOS lecture, which is why I have not yet removed it from my channel. And uh, at the same time, I'll skip those portions because it's a long thing to do today because there are so many hormones in the adrenal gland. We'll be talking about Cushing syndrome. We'll be talking about CH yet again. We'll be talking about, if time allows, about, you know, hyperaldosteronism, con syndrome. And that is going to eat away some time. And I want to give equal time to everything. So which is why. I'll be not repeating those things which you, which I've already elaborately spoken before, which includes the uh, Ferriman Galloway scoring and uh, also the hormones which we had discussed uh, before in when we were talking about PCOS. All right, and uh, so that that's going to be a little easier for you if you just go through my previous lecture. I've not yet removed it. So let's begin with hirsutism. Here we're going to talk about what is hirsutism. What all comes under hirsutism? What is the etiology of hirsutism? A little bit about diagnosis as well. We're going to touch, just touch upon. And of course, the treatment of hirsutism. And mind you, no matter how small or irrelevant this topic looks like, and all our attention suddenly when I talk about hirsutism it gets focused on PCOS, hirsutism alone, questions have been asked enormously in the past, especially on the treatment of hirsutism. And not just on the treatment of hirsutism, but also split into such a way that, you know, the chemical management of the biochemical management of hirsutism, you know, the, the modern day management of hirsutism, the etiology of us, all these have been separate questions asked by the DNB examiners in the past. Let's begin. So as you can see over here, beautiful girls with coarse black hair here, okay, especially here, chin. Chin is the area. Upper lip and chin in, in females is, you know, uh, you know, uh, pretty... You know, pointing out towards hirsutism. So over here, the hair are not counted. Here and here, they are the places at which the hair are counted in Ferriman Galloway scoring. So hirsutism is a 
डिफाइंड एज अ प्रेजेंस ऑफ एक्सेसिव एंड्रोजन रिस्पॉन्सिव टर्मिनल कोर्स है in the female in a fe- in a male like distribution especially on the face like in the mustache beard and in the midline chest intermammaries i when i told about uh, ferrimen galloway scoring i spoke about nine areas okay if you do remember so it was upper lip it was chin it was upper you know that the chest upper abdomen lower abdomen upper back lower back upper arm and inner thighs okay so these were the first, six the, there were the nine areas in which these uh, work these places were counted as ferrimen galloway scoring how they were counted 1 2 3 4 as their uh, you know grading and you know thick coarse abundant hair was four and the minimal hair present was one so anything close to two or close to one is two anything close to four is three i mean four but lesser than four is three two one but a little more than one is two that's how i always teach you scoring right that's the way it is easier and there is no zero okay in ferrimen galloway and more than eight is diagnostic of uh pseudism so in hirsutism the vellus hair that means the fine non pigmented short hair which are normally present gets transformed into terminal coarse dark stiff pigmented hair due to excess of androgens on the pilocybaceous unit now it is different from hyperandrogenism virilization and hypertrichosis we have to these actually these terms are i won't say different you have to like sit down and do the differential diagnosis it's just in connection with hirsutism these terms are usually used so let's understand what they are so hyperandrogenism is nothing but state of androgen excess uh usually due to abnormalities of the ovarian and renal function it manifests as either hirsutism or virilization now what is virilization a rare condition in which there is marked elevation in serum androgen levels <coughs> and is characterized by hirsutism with one or more of male characteristics like either there is coarsening of voice temporal baldness clitoromegaly increased muscle mass so basically it's more of you know genital region getting Uh, you know changed but in case of an adult full grown person if there is at all virilization because of hyperandrogenism like in case of adult onset ch your genitalia will not be changed what will change will be the muscle mass breast atrophy decreased body fat temporal baldness okay coarsening or deepening of of your voice so that is a, they are also called as virilization hypertrichosis is nothing but excessive growth of non sexual terminal hair so you have a lot of hair but that's not going to be called as hirsutism uh, which are usually fine and lightly pigmented and in probably non sexual areas like in trunk and extremities so a lot of hair here a lot of hair on the hair on the on the uh, leg down they they are not your sexual uh, terminal hair okay not the male pattern of uh, hair male pattern of hair which is going to be more of hirsutism and now a little little word about what is the normal hair growth so just a second guys okay so there are three types of hair okay i just spoke about two of them the vellus hair the fine downy hair covering the entire body before puberty okay you must have even on, on your on your face the you know the very downy kind of hair the fine light pigmented downy hair you if you if you're there in the sun you'll be able to see those fine and that's called the vellus hair okay then you have terminal hair they are the coarse stiff pigmented and long and then finally you have the sexual hair which are also terminal hair but they respond to the sex organ so terminal hair you'll find here on your hands on your legs that's terminal hair this is what increases in hypertrichosis but sexual hair is the one which responds to the sex steroids they are the ones which are present here here all those places which i spoke about when when i spoke about the ferrimen galloway scoring of course hair shows cyclical activity so there is a growth phase anagen phase there is an involution phase which is a catagen phase and then there is a resting telogen phase that duration varies that's the worst thing certain major metabolic events like severe illness pregnancy delivery they can cause hair loss due to telogen phase of hair so the hair have gone into resting phase okay telogen you don't know when they're going to come back from that so anagen phase is gone now if you see this slide guys and if you see this slide from where do you think you would like to study this slide or this slide this is the reason why i have included my notes 
I know my writing is not very legible, and I'm re really sorry that you're not impressed with my writing. But I'm just trying to show you this is the way to write down the notes the examiner would love to read and will not get annoyed. Okay, so if you write down essay form like this, it's saying the same story it is as this. But I would love to you know read this part. It is both of them are saying about the role of androgens. So this is testosterone. See, it's produced majorly by the peripheral peripheral conversion. Okay, peripheral conversion in the adipose in the adipose tissue, the fatty tissue, right? So it's converted. So it's peripherally converted. Testosterone happens to be the most important androgen. Okay, very very important androgen, and it is produced by adrenals, twenty five percent. It is produced by ovaries also, twenty five percent, and majority of it comes from the peripheral conversion of fats. Okay, and how that does that convert? That will include in, in the next slide when I will be talking about CAH. Hmm. So testosterone is converted to dihydroxy testosterone by the uh, enzyme called five alpha reductase, and DHT, dihydrotestosterone, that's the most biologically active androgen. and that is followed by testosterone so anything as androstenedione dehydroepi androstenedione these are all lesser uh, you know active form of androgen they are also androgens see why do we call them androgens because there's a group of substances okay you have dihydro uh, epi androstenedione you have uh, dhea dheas you have uh, uh, androstenedione then you have dihydro uh, testosterone and then you have testosterone so most biologically active dht then comes testosterone and then all these dhea dheas and uh, you know as and dhea dheas they are mostly secreted by the adrenal gland but you know what happens with testosterone right now almost 80% of the serum testosterone the serum testosterone which is there in the serum it's bound to the shbg that is sex hormone binding globulin okay And nineteen percent is bound to albumin, so one percent of this testosterone is only free, just one percent. It is this free testosterone which is biologically active. Now, if there is any condition in which this sex hormone binding globulin decreases, like it was in case of PCOS, if you remember, this free testosterone increases and finally starts doing its job. Okay, this is what I was trying to impress upon you. It's something of a similar kind is given over here. Now I'll talk about the etiology of hirsutism. So, among so many causes, the most important one are the ovarian causes, the adrenal causes, and the drugs. Ovarian causes definitely PCOS will be will be there. Ovarian hyperthyrosis is not a very common condition, so let's not go about it. But what is exactly ovarian hyperthyrosis? Is that the theca cells in ovary, okay, they secrete the ones which secrete the androgens. so they are actually like they, they become more hyperplastic because of whatever reasons one of them is definitely pco is the most significant cause in which ovarian hyperthyrosis also occurs but ovarian hyperthyrosis can occur without pcos as well all right so in them the hydrogen the androgens they increase in quantity then you have ovarian neoplasms which is very very common common i wouldn't say so much but yeah the question asked the on on them are also there in many competitive exams i've seen these questions so at least you should know these questions so what are the androgen secreting recently there was a question asked on estrogen secreting hormones uh, estrogen secreting tumors of the ovary and the management okay i, I had a, a little difficult time in making that answer because uh, you know there are I I wanted to see whether it's hormone secreting tumors of the ovary or it is estrogen secreting tumors of the ovary and then the management of them so every you know different tumor has a slightly different management not every uh, tumor has to be excised not every tumor has to be excised immediately not so anyways it was a little tricky question so you should know at least the name of these tumors so that if suppose a question is asked on androgen secreting ovarian tumors and its management at least your name should be there you know so sertoli leydig cell tumor which is very very obvious by the name hydra cell tumor lipoid cell tumor not so much but androblastoma gynandroblastoma gonadoblastoma these names you should know androblastoma gynandroblastoma gonadoblastoma and sertoli cell secreting tumor apart from that lipoid cell tumor and hydra cell tumor. you can remember now congenital uh, uh, adrenal causes in include uh, adrenal causes include congenital adrenal hyperplasia cushing syndrome adrenal tumors all of which we'll be discussing in the next slides okay among the drugs if you start taking androgens okay or anabolic steroids testosterone glucocorticoids they are all those anabolic drugs which are going to be causing more of androgen in the body danizol minoxidil for so there are many people who start taking minoxidil for hair loss 
and it finally causes unwanted hair at other places in the body so it has to be topically given at to a particular amount of dose then uh, uh, sometimes yes l thyroxin its dose its overdose it also leads to hirsutism of course there are genetic causes ethnic causes uh, increase sensitivity sometimes hepatic diseases because they decrease the shbg levels miscellaneous causes like obesity hypothyroidism hyperprolactinemia remember these obesity hypothyroidism hyperprolactinemia can also lead to hirsutism and of course idiopathy the easiest to always mention so ovarian causes we've done in detail about it we're not going to go back on it uh, amongst the musculinizing ovarian tumors okay the more you study about it the better it is because if suppose a googly question comes you'll be able to at least write down these things okay so there are signs of virilization defeminization like hirsutism clitoromegaly breast atrophy amenorrhea coarseness coarse voice muscular growth clinical examination may be normal if the tumor is not is, is small but ultrasound and ct scan should definitely be should definitely be opted for testosterone levels are elevated to more than 200 nanogram per ml uh, nanogram per deciliter i remember i spoke about the normal values of androgens you should know this so total testosterone is not usually more than 20 to 80 nanogram per deciliter okay and free testosterone is around 0.6 to 6.8 picogram per ml 1% of this entire thing so if it is more than 200 you know it's obviously coming from a ovarian tumor so testosterone will have more than 200 if it's a tumor it's a create a lot of testosterone okay but if it's a it's a metabolic condition like pcos it might not reach 200 level it may be somewhere around 120 140 or something like that or even 80 90 something like that so most ovarian neoplasms are benign and the, they are small but sometimes they can be a low grade malignant as well surgical removal of the tumor leads to improvement in penetration of the feature so it's usually small so sometimes you do think about whether to remove it or not but you are they're usually small but removing it will improve the overall well being of the patient so might as well go ahead and do that so that is the problem with uh, you know hormone secreting tumors because they are not doing anything by the size of them they're doing by the secretions that they are do they're secreting so for an estrogen uninhibited estrogens androgen uh, uninhibited androgens they're going to obviously cause their own ill effects then adrenal causes like i said i'll be taking up in detail in the next section we're going to just skip it through for now cushing syndrome again i'm going to be discussing it so i'm i'm skipping it for now hyperprolactinemia it's a small usually small pituitary tumor prolactin highly uh, arises more than 100 nanogram per ml and ct scan mri will be able to help you and then of course gabapoline you can give to just quieten down the micro adenoma pitalis boss if, if it's there and if it's a macro adenoma you might have to even remove it now the pathophysiology of hirsutism so in hair follicle testosterone is converted into dht by the enzyme 5 alpha reductase and mainly dht but partly testosterone irreversibly converts a soft and short villus hair to coarse terminal hair in the androgen sensitive areas causing excessive hair growth in the upper lip chin face chest and linea alba of the lower abdomen and you have this ferriman galloway scoring guys for only some few important reasons i've not tried to revise it again for you but of course those nine uh, you know places you should know and then there is a, a simplified ferriman galloway scoring as well okay if you do remember that that had some four five uh, uh, places to look at and uh, a scoring of more than or equal to 3 is hirsutism 